Hi, I'm Violet Van Hees and this is Grow Your Movement Freedom. Welcome. So today we're going to look at one of these mysteries that's been intriguing me for years, which is how do we actually find length in our body against gravity? Because most of our models of how we work are mechanical models where we put building blocks on top of each other and those building blocks would actually just compress and get shorter if they're pulled together by muscles. Yet we have ways to find length and spring and a sense of up in our body. How does that work? Today we're going to take a look at that. start with a little clip with my friend Andrew Gibbons, who's a Feldenkrais practitioner in New York, you saw him in the last video, and with his daughter. And in this particular clip, Andrew is playing the piano. He's a very accomplished classical piano player. And he's playing the piano and he keeps a beautiful lightness and ability to play the piano well and with beautiful fluid movement and, and skill, in spite of having his daughter climbing onto his back while he's playing. Let's take a look at this. And then we'll talk about how the body is amazingly designed to be able to do this kind of thing. So that was pretty cool, eh? So let's just take a look at this for a minute. Here's how our body is normally described with normal biomechanics or normal sense of how our, our bones work and all that. We're, we have a model where the idea is that the bones stack up on top of each other. Sort of like these cans of cat food here. So if you imagine that this might be your spine and that the little pieces of tissue in between are the discs. So the discs are usually little, like little, a little leather pouch with toothpaste inside, and then you've got bones that stack up on top of each other like this. And the idea is that there's muscles in between the bones, and the muscles will move the bones around. But the thing is, with this model, all the weight goes down in gravity, so it's supported by gravity and going down in gravity. And then if you have muscles working on this, muscles shorten when they work. They don't lengthen, they, get, they release, it's sort of like an elastic band will release, but the muscles themselves get short. So if everything gets short and crunches together, you get something that's very stable, but has not much ability to move. And everything gets compressed, you get squeezed together. And the question is, how do the, the discs inside the back withstand that kind of compression of your weight, walking, running, jumping, doing whatever you do in life? It just doesn't really make sense. So here's a new model that's based on what Buckminster Fuller called tensegrity. And it's an idea that uh, you can get structural support that provides lift and uh, suspension of the solid units in there by having some kind of suspending framework that's in it, like bungee cords. So right now, I'm going to demo this by adding the use of a stocking. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to wrap it in this. There we go. So now we have something that's suspended in some kind of column of support here. And you may be going at this point, well, that's all very nice and well, Violet, but my body's not made up of nylon stockings. So, and here's a little thing you may have seen. It's a kid's toy, baby toy, that's based on tensegrity. And what this is, is little pieces of wood, or the hard objects, that are suspended in a network of little bungee cords. And there's people that have taken that idea and turned it into, taken it into biology and called it biotensegrity. So here you see a tensegrity structure. This is a big piece of art. This is a tower that was built that's several stories high. Here you're looking through the bottom. And then here's a model that somebody made of a spine. And each of these balls with four little sticks in it is suspended in little bungee cords. So none of those balls in the spine or pieces in there 
actually touch each other. Here's a better model of it even yet. So there's each one of those little balls with little sticks sticking out is not touching any other little ball or little sticks. They're all suspended. And what it means if something suspended like that is that there is space, that the bones don't actually land on top of each other and grind hard all the time. They're actually given a little bit of space and space in the joints. And apparently that's what surgeons find in the joints as well. The bones in the knee joints, for example, don't actually fully make contact and grind against each other. There's a little bit of space in there. So then the question becomes, how do we put this to work when we want to do something? So here's your tip for today. Here's something simple to go try out, and it's pretty intriguing to look at how your body takes an idea and puts it to work that lets you feel the difference between sort of stacked up and landed in gravity and connected down versus having some spring and some lift and having some up. I'll explain this once and then I'll demonstrate it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna let your heels rise up and down uh, just staying, standing on your feet, let your heels go up and down, so you're kind of doing this. And for a couple of moments there, you're going to think down and get a feeling of down in your body. And then for a couple of minutes, you're just going to ask and explore what it's like to have a feeling of up. It looks like this. So here we go. I'm going to lift my heels up and down, and I'm going to think for a few moments down. And then I'm going to think for a few minutes, up. That's it. And knowing that you can think down and think up and get two different experiences gives you something to go play with. So when you and your own experience will guide when you think those things are good to do. When down is good for you, when up might be something that you'd like. So when you go out for a walk, notice how you walk when you think down versus when you think up or when you want to sit into a chair or get out of a chair, what does it feel like if you're thinking down while you're doing it versus if you're thinking up? So if you've enjoyed learning about this and you'd like to know more about how your back finds strength and mobility and comfort all at the same time, and how this tensegrity stuff works and how you can find movement in your spine at the same time as you find ability to work and do things, I have a back workshop coming up. On January 30th, I've got a workshop called Increase Your Back Strength, Comfort and Mobility. More details for that on my website right below and at the end of the video today. And now we're going to finish with one more clip, again with my friend Andrew Gibbons and his other daughter, also climbing onto his back, but this one is filmed in slow motion with no sound. And it's actually lovely to watch something with no sound sometimes because you see things that you might not see as well if you're hearing things at the same time. So watch this and notice now that we've talked about down and up and those kinds of things, notice if you can see him finding his strength through his body, creating some lines of up so that he keeps freedom and ease in his hands while his daughter is climbing all over him. All right, enjoy this. Thank you very much. See you next time.